It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to this special edition of Science Bowl. The two teams you're about to meet have been here before. One of them will move on as the third of the four semifinalists in this year's competition. Let's meet the schools right now. Let's go first to Berwyn Heights Elementary. Here they are. Our players, Calder Baldwin Butt, George Redden, and Tessa Thomas. And from University Park Elementary School, our players, Nina McGranahan, Surya Putkadenthi, and Emma Allen. And now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen sink. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty with easier questions on the left, worth 5 and 10, tougher, 15, 20, ultimately 25, toughest question of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points, no penalties ever for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds today, we will have our third member of the final four in this year's elementary school competition. Let's make sure everything works properly. Before we start, George, would you try your buzzer? Thank you, young man. Good luck to you, to Calder and to Tessa. Surya, would you try yours? The two seems to be in fine shape. Good luck to you, Emma and to Nina. Are we ready? Let's do this. Congratulations, teams, on making it this far in the competition. That testifies to the skill you've got. We're proud of all of you guys. Let's have a good game. We go alphabetically B before you. So Berwyn Heights and George, let's play the bowl. Green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, the prickly seed case of plants like thistle have what's... Hmm, Berwyn Heights. Self-defense system. Not a self-defense system. University Park, the prickly seed cases of plants like thistle have what same name as the sound you make when you're cold. Burr, 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 burr. Burr? A burr. Absolutely right. That's what you call those seed cases. Good. Come back. Go green. Super 8 for 10. Super 8 for 10, please. Super 8 for 10 points. Teams, the W50 Nebula was recently renamed because it resembles this aquatic mammal in Florida, Berwyn Heights. Manatee, manatee. I'll pass it to Calder. Calder? Manatee. The manatee. It's now called the Manatee Nebula. Absolutely right. Looks like a mermaid. It belongs to an order called the Sirens or the Sirenia. Go again, green. Uh, excuse me. Uh, red, please. Thank you. Body system for, for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, these third set of your molars that come in when you're a bit older are given this name, even though they're not quite smart. Berwyn Heights. Smart, yes, sir. Smart molars. Again? Smart. No. University Park, this third set of molars that comes in a little bit later in life are given this name, even though they're not particularly smart. Wisdom teeth? Wisdom teeth. That's it. Good comeback. Go green. Let's get physical for 10, please. Get physical for 10 points. Teams, what meteorological phenomenon forms when the temperature and the dew point are the same? Uh, University uh, Park. Fog. Fog? Fog, yeah. As Carl Sandburg says, it comes in on little cat feet. You don't even know it's there. Go green. Potpourri for 10. 15. Potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10. Potpourri for 10, please. Potpourri for 10 points. Teams, even though dung beetles don't have sextants or astrolabes, and are not astronomers, they can find their way from the dung heap to their home by using Berwyn Heights. Um, Antennae. Antennae? Antenna? No. University Park, even though these dung beetles don't have sextants or astrolabes, they, like true astronomers, can get back home by monitoring these celestial bodies. Stars? Stars, yeah. They read the stars to find their way home. Amazing. 
Go, green. Dateline for 10, please. Dateline for 10 points. Teams, along with the Loch Ness Monster and the Abominable Snowman, people in the Northwest keep looking for this Megapod. Big foot, big foot, University big Park. Bigfoot? Bigfoot, Megapod, Bigfoot. You got it, go green. I'm green, thanks for 15. Yeah. Green, thanks for 15. Green, thanks for 15, please. Green, thanks for 15 points. A multiple choice question. Teams, fruit trees that don't make any fruit like the cherry trees in Washington, are known as deciduous trees, diaceous trees, or ornamental trees. George. Ornamental. ornamental. Ornamental trees, yes, they're just nice to look at, but don't go hungry, there's no fruit. Okay, good going, go red. Um, let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, Buffy was a vampire slayer, but a buffer is a chemical that keeps this Berwyn Heights. Diamond. Diamond, no, no. A buffer is a chemical that keeps this quantity, this chemical quality in your blood at 7 pH or less. University Park. Acidity, no, acidity. 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 Um, acidity? Acidity, absolutely right. A buffer keeps the acidity at levels that life is possible. Good answer. You almost didn't give me that. I could tell you were going back and forth. Go green. Deadline 15. Dateline for 15, please. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, the television commercial for Celebrex, which is an arthritis medicine, the script of it, which says, a body in motion tends to stay in motion. A body at rest. <laughs> University <laughs> Park. Newton's laws. Newton's laws. That's Newton's laws. Yes, Isaac Newton could have written that script. Calder. Again? It's the first law. Yes, it is. Good. All right. Thank you for that. Additional information. University Park 130, 75 Berwyn Heights. Still a good game going here. Pick, Surya. Go. Super 8 for 15. Super 8 for 15, please. Super 8 for 15 points. Teams, at the end of the breeding season, a bird's flashy feathers get kind of dull. And that plumage has what same name as a celestial body that blocks the view of another celestial body. Eclipse. Berwyn Eclipse. Heights. Eclipse? Eclipse, yes. It's called Eclipse Plumage. Absolutely. Good thinking. You're listening to all those clues. Good plan. Go. Red. Science Potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. Teams, someone who suffers from rabies also suffers from its synonym hydrophobia. <laughs> University Park. The fear of water. The fear of water. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Emma. She jumped all over that one. The buzzer has rung. Our first round is over. Our score, Berwyn Heights 90, University Park 145. We'll be back with round two in one moment. Don't you go away. With video games, I'm always choosing between what my kids want and what I think is best for them. How about this one? Which is why I love these new rating summaries. They let me know exactly what's in the game. Players shoot lasers from an arm cannon. Robot enemies explode and limbs fly off. Maybe that other one's better. Yeah. Get your free game rating summary today. And with it, the world's most powerful weapon, knowledge. Experience Taekwondo, an ancient martial art and contemporary Olympic sport. Taekwondo seeks to bring together mind, body, and spirit while promoting sportsmanship, family values, and discipline. If you are looking to participate in a healthy lifetime activity that promotes self-control, integrity, and perseverance, then Taekwondo is the sport for you. The physical benefits of Taekwondo are many. Fitness, flexibility, better reflexes, and improved self-confidence. All of these attributes benefit young and older alike. USA Taekwondo member schools are considered to be the best at teaching the sport. Utilizing only the most professional and experienced instructors, USA Taekwondo schools are the only place to learn. So whether your dream is to win the Olympics or just learn self-defense and have fun, the USA Taekwondo school will take you on an amazing journey. To find the USA Team Member Club here in and receive a free trial lesson, call 719-8666. 632 or visit our website today. I always thought being a good mother meant raising my baby myself. But when I got pregnant, I realized I wasn't ready to be a parent. So I did something I thought I could never do. I chose adoption. It was really hard, but I know my baby is with a loving family and has a very bright future. Sometimes choosing adoption is being a good mother. Visit us at ichooseadoption.org.
And welcome back to Science Bowl. Nice to have you here today. Six great players vying for the chance to move on to the finale of this season. We started with 40 elementary schools. We're down almost to the final four. The third one will be one of these two teams. Berwyn Heights, nice to have you here. You've never won a county championship. This could be your year. George, how did you prepare for this? Um, we study every Tuesday and Monday. Yeah. And do you quiz each other, or how do you do it? We play, we have a simulation of Science Bowl. Yeah. Do you watch old games ever on YouTube? Yes, I do. Get a sense of the kinds of questions we ask in our style around here. Well, you're doing a nice job. George, tell us about Berwyn Heights. Uh, we know it's over in Berwyn Heights near Greenbelt, and uh, your principal is Dr. Singer, and the sponsor of your team, Mr. Goldstein, and he's out there along with some alternates. Who are they? Kyle Legre, yeah. J.C. Monroy, and Elias Guz Guzman. Wonderful. That's your shadow team out there, and they're all wearing matching red shirts just like you. I think Mr. Goldstein has on a red shirt, too. So the red team and the red shirts, that's purely coincidence today. Berwyn Heights has lots of great things. I asked you this once before. Brag a little bit. Brag about Berwyn Heights for me. It's located in a great community, and everybody knows each other, and all the teachers are caring to the students. It's pretty fun. Yeah, if school's not fun, you really don't want to go. If learning's not fun and you've got teachers who are your advocates and care about you, then uh, anything's possible. You guys are great advertisements for Berwyn Heights. George, someday you want to uh, do what? Become a become an mechanical engineer. Yeah, and why mechanical engineering and not chemical or civil or some other kind? I really like building machines and creating new machines for people's use because it's always going to be a use for new machines. Absolutely. You'll never want for work, George, because we are a mechanical society. And Tessa, tell us about your dreams. Um, when I get older, I want to become a mechanic. Yeah, and you told me on a previous show that you worked with your dad when you were younger and you saw how he fixed cars. And uh, what kind of tricks did you learn? Do you, what are some of the things that you always remember to do? Um, I remembered a lot of the parts of a car. Yeah, and those parts keep changing, don't they? They used to be yes. distributor caps and spark plugs you had to change. And nowadays, you almost need a computer to work on a car, right? Yeah. What do you do in your spare time? Um, I crochet and I read. Yeah, and you told me that you give away some of the things you crochet uh, as gifts. <coughs> what do you crochet? Um, pretty much anything. Yeah, scarves, sweaters. Very nice. Great talent and much appreciated gifts. Calder, young man who wants to be... An artist. An artist, yeah. And you want to paint or draw? Draw. You want to draw. Why draw? Do you draw now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you tell me some of the things you draw? I like to draw like just ran I start out with the shape and then try to fill it into something else. Hmm. So can you, do you see yourself as maybe a professional artist someday? Not like really. Cartoonist? No? What do you like to do if you're not drawing? I like to play baseball. Yeah. And you told me you're a utility player. You'll play any position, right? Yeah. You'll pitch? You'll catch? Not really pitch, but everything else. Everything will. else. All right. Well, uh, what team do you play for? Um, the Boys and Girls Club for Berwyn Heights. Wonderful. They're lucky to have you. We're lucky to have you here today. You keep up your good work. You're a good student. University Park, nice to have you guys here. And University Park, the winningest school in size ball history when it comes to the elementary division. And you're making a good stab at maybe repeating here. Not if Berwyn Heights has anything to say about that. Tell us about University Park. Who's your principal? Um, our principal is Nancy Schickner. Yeah, and she's a wonderful principal. And uh, Mr. Favero is your sponsor. and He does great work all the time, and we congratulate him. He's a new dad. He's got a future Science Bowl contestant, maybe, and his little daughter, Emily. Congratulations, Jeff. And any alternates on your team, sir? Um, yes, we have Brianna Rowley, Elise Carey, James Dawson and Rory McEwen. Wow, shadow team plus one. Let me ask you what I asked George. How do you get ready for this? How do you prepare for science? So ball? Mr. Favero makes sometimes makes up questions and we play mock games. And then we watch a lot of Science Bowl episodes and answer the questions. Wonderful. So you know the kinds of questions we're going to ask here. And uh, let me ask you, I uh, asked George about University Park. So many great things happen there. What, what do you like best about that school? Why can't you wait to get there? We have a lot of extracurriculars, after, so after school classes. We have Latin, painting. Now I think we have a, what's that choir called again? Swing choir. Swing choir. Swing choir. Oh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> and uh, this team also uh, was part of a group that went to Carnegie Hall recently and performed. And uh, what a great achievement that was. Sorry, what do you want to do someday? Um, I would like to be in the Coast Guard. 
or be an investor. Or an investor. All right. So uh, you've got the smarts, I think, to do anything you want to do. Nice to have you with us. Emma, tell us the Emma story. What do you do in your spare time? Um, I like to swim and I read a lot. Yeah. Is there a swim team in University Park? Um, yeah. You know, um, Adelphi Dolphins. Adelphi Dolphins. Dolphins, yeah. And of course, you're very close to the University of Maryland, which has that brand, not brand new pool, but it's a magnificent pool over there. Hopefully, you get to swim there. What do you want to do someday, Emma? I'd like to be an astronaut. Yeah. Well, uh, astronauts uh, have played a major role in this country's history, and uh, let's hope you can fill that role very soon. Nina, nice to have you here. Young lady who wants to design things as an architect, yeah, or an engineer two disciplines that work together. And you recently put together a structure that withstood the weight of a 150-pound man, yeah? yeah? What did you do? Well, well, we had like a bunch of supplies and, well, we had like a list of supplies we could use and we, it, in the box, we could use cardboard, corrugated cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. In the boxes, I found these penta like packing pentagons. Yeah. And, well, we thought that maybe the Pentagon would, since it was already made to be in the shape of a Pentagon, would like withstand the weight, and it did. And, and it did. So wow. that that's a real accomplishment. It's like you know dropping an egg from the top of a building and not having it crack because you've uh, cushioned it in in the proper way. Yeah. Destination imagination, yeah? yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to our game. Good player, Nina. 145 for University Park, 90 for Berwyn Heights. Last correct answer came from the green team. Lots of points to give away. Good luck, teams. Here we go. Surya? Body systems for 15, please. Body systems for 15 points. People who are very allergic to things carry an EpiPen with them that contains epinephrine so they don't go into shock. Epinephrine is another name for what hormone? <coughs> epinephrine is another name for what hormone for 15 points, Berwyn Heights? Can you tell me? Yes, sir? Um, All right, don't ring in unless you have an idea. Surya, Emma, and Nina, EpiPens contain epinephrine. For people who are allergic to things like bee stings, so they don't go into shock, epinephrine is another name for what hormone? Adrenaline. Adrenaline was the right answer. Try again, please. Green. Um, green things for 20, please. Green things for 20 points. Teams, if an insect lays its eggs on a plant with the thought that once the eggs hatch, the little hatchlings will have some food to eat. What L initial term, therefore, is given to that plant because it's going to feed these stages of an insect's life? Berwyn Heights. These stages of life. Metamorphism. Yes, sir? Metamorphism. I said L initial. What's the L initial term of that plant? It is given that name because it's going to feed this L initial stage in an insect's life. Larva. Larva? Yeah, it's the larval plant. Good. Go. Green. <laughs> Um, Zoo Parade for 20, please. Zoo Parade for 20 points. Teams, your question is as follows. Listen carefully. If you know what a precocious child is, you know that a precocial baby bird can do something that an altricial baby bird can't do. Precocial baby birds are like baby chickens and baby ducks and baby turkeys, whereas altricial baby birds are baby sparrows and baby robins and baby cardinals. What can the precocial birds do that the other ones can't? Swim, swim. Berwyn Heights. Swim. Not swim. No, not a chicken or a turkey. University Park. What can a precocial bird do that an altricial bird can't? Vocalize. Yes. Not vocalize. They can get up and run around. Those other birds, they're weak, they're blind, they can't open their eyes. A precocious child is a child that is way beyond its years. Tough question, deservedly so for 20 points. Go green. Dateline for 20. Yep. Dateline for 20, please. Dateline for 20. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. Recently, they found a fossilized footprint at the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt of this dinosaur. It is an ornithopod, so named because it is very similar to what? Present-day creatures. Berwyn Heights. Yes, sir. I passed the Calder. Calder? A chicken. Uh, give me more information. Um, Judges? Uh, rooster. Judges? No. Not quite. University Park, can you tell me why this is called an ornithopod? Because it resembles what modern day creatures? Birds? Birds, absolutely right. We were hoping you could say bird. Give us a more general term, Calder. Nice try. Go green. Uh, let's, let's, get let's get physical. Let's get physical for 20, please. Get physical for 20 points. Teams, 
Back in 1821, the effects of the gravitational pull of this planet on the orbit of Uranus let astronomers deduce that it existed. Yes, sir. That's Calder. Calder? Um, Jupiter? Nope, not Jupiter. University Park. The effects of the gravitational pull of this planet on the orbit of Uranus let astronomers deduce that this planet existed before they ever saw it. Neptune? It is Neptune. Yes, indeed. Good answer. Go. Green. Body systems. Body systems for 20, please. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, what P-initialed substance can be found on your teeth and in your blood vessels? Plaque. Plaque. Yes. The leader of the plaque. All that junk food and soda that sometimes we consume. All right. Go green. Science potpourri for 20, please. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, what process took place if you were unlucky enough to look the Gorgon Medusa with her snake-like hair in the face? Berwyn Heights. Turned to stone. You turned to stone, that's right. You were petrified. Good, red. Um, zoo Parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25. Big one in that category. Teams, the toughest question of the game. Bears are omnivores because they eat plants and animals. But lions, which eat only meat, are called poly phagous animals, just like a rabbit is polyphagous, even though it eats just plants. What does the word polyphagous mean then? Because it sounds like omnivore. Think about it. Can I pass it to Calder? Calder, what do you want to tell me? It's only one kind? Nope, not just one kind. If you are polyphagous, like a lion, and you're a carnivore, what does that tell you? They have variety in their diet? Absolutely right. They eat many different kinds of meat. A rabbit eats many different kinds of plants. Polyphagus, many foods. Good answer. Good way to parse that phrase. Go green. Science potpourri for 25, please. Potpourri for 25 points. Teams, what M initial term describes when an animal changes like from a chrysalis to an adult? Metamorphosis? Yes, we will give that to you. Morphous, morphing or metamorphosis where acceptable. Go. Let's get physical for 25. Physical for 25 points. A uh, visual question. Look at your monitor, please. Teams, this is called the Seagull Nebula because it looks like a seagull. It is found in the constellation Monoceros, which is named for what fictional animal? What fictional animal is the Monoceros constellation named for? Can I pass it to Tessa? Tessa. Minotaur? Not a minotaur. No, a Monoceros is what fictional animal, that constellation, University Park? Unicorn? A unicorn, mono meaning one, seros meaning horn. You got that right, go green. Body systems for 20. Yeah. Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. Teams, there is a statue of a little girl in a Washington cemetery. It was long thought that she was the first person who was killed in a car accident in the district. It turned out after research that she had nephritis, which is a disease that affects what organs? What organs are affected by nephritis, George? Pass the liver. Pass. Not the liver. University Park nephritis affects what organs? The kidneys. Kidneys, that's right. Nephrons, nephro is a prefix that means kidney. All right, try again. Green. Thanks for 25. Green things for 25, please. Green things for 25 points. Teams, it was back in 1694 that botanists first explained how the stamens and the carpels, the sex organs of a plant, made this process possible. Reproduction. Reproduction. Reproduction, yes, indeed, or fertilization. Absolutely. Go red. They got science for 25. They went for 25 points. Teams, we, a lot of us got vaccinated against the flu this year but there is an N initial disease for which there is no vaccine characterized by projectile vomiting that no amount of hand washing can wash away. What is this N initial disease that many people are coming down with this year? Nauseous. Berwynites. Come on, Calder. Nauseousness? Not nauseousness, no. University Park? What do you think, Surya? The norovirus. The norovirus was the right answer. Go again, please, Red. George. Science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, Mr. Snicket will never get scurvy because his first name means he's full of vitamin C. What's his first name? Berwyn Heights? Orange. 
Not orange, nope. University Park, Mr. Snicket's first name. Lemony? Lemony, Lemony Snicket, go green. For five, please. Body assistance for five points. Teams, a lot of kids today get rings on their nose, on their lip, on their tongue. Some people get them on this placental scar on their abdomen. Belly University button. Park, where do they get a ring? Belly button. It is placental. Belly button? The belly button or the, nav the navel. Absolutely right. Good. Go, green. Green things for five. Green things for five? Green things for five points. Teams, because the houses of Lancaster and York were represented by the white and red versions of this very beautiful flower, when they fought each other... Roses. Roses? The War of the Roses. That's it. Good. Green. Super eight for five. Super eight. Super eight for five, please. Super eight for five points. Teams, the winner of this year's Newbery Award for the best children's book is the one and only Ivan about this largest of primates befriending this largest of pachyderms. All right, give me the both. Give me both animals, Berwyn Heights. Gorilla and lion? No, not a gorilla and a lion. The largest of primates and the largest of pachyderms befriend each other in the one and only Ivan, Surya. A gorilla and an elephant? And an elephant. That was the pachyderm. All right, the buzzer has rung. We've come to the end of this science bowl match. We'll be back in just one moment. I knew I needed help paying for college. I've always wanted to be a teacher. I used to make worksheets for my friends to do. No one ever wanted to come over. My guidance counselor told me about federal student aid, and my mom helped me fill out the free application. I got the grants and loans that made school possible. There is a way to pay for school. You just have to find it. My name is Caitlin. I'm going to be a special education teacher. I'm going to live my dream. For years, scientists have explored remote corners of the Earth, searching for exotic substances that might help prevent cancer. At last, man has discovered a secret place where powerful remedies can actually be found. Medical research shows that a vegetarian diet rich in fruits, vegetables and whole grains can help prevent many types of cancer. Wherever you live, cancer prevention is as close as your grocery store. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. Welcome back to Science Bowl. You know, nobody is a loser here on Science Bowl. All these young people are ambassadors for their school, and as such, we are proud of them. Our final tally today, Berwyn Heights 135, University Park 345. Congratulations to University Park. You are the third of the four finalists in this year's competition. Nina, Surya, and Emma, give us your biggest smiles because you did a great job here today. And their shadow team, Elise and Rory and James and Brianna, and Mr. Favero, congratulations. We will see you in the finals. And let me see some smiles over here. George was not happy throughout because he wanted to win this thing. And I understand and I empathize. Calder, you gave it your best shot. You did Tessa too. We are so happy you were here today. And congratulations to the alternates back there too. Elias and JC and Kyle and Mr. Goldstein. Thank you for always being an integral part of this game. And Ms. Waller, our school board member, is here, and she's bubbling over with enthusiasm, was giving fist bumps to everybody because they're all great. That's right. You're all great. You're all champions. Congratulations, and thank you all for all the hard work that you've done. Absolutely right. And we will see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.